All right, what's up y'all, it's Ryan here again. And this time I'm here with something slightly different. I mean, usually I show you guys a new guitar tone of the week or a new demo song and things like that. But today I'm actually gonna show you how to build that guitar tone from scratch. So the good folks over at STL Tones were kind enough to send over the Tonality Josh Middleton plugin. And although I did not pay them for this plugin, they also did not ask for a video to be made for it. So I guess this is not a sponsored video. I don't know, y'all can let me know in the comments. But I did think that this plugin was too sick not to show y'all. For those of you that don't know who Josh Middleton is, he is the guitar player and songwriter in Silosis. Uh, and others may know him from from his time in Architects, where he obviously wrote a ton of insane riffs, but everybody knows Josh as the guitar tone master as far as metalcore goes. He just has some of the best guitar tones that anybody might hear. He's also very adept at making great impulse responses, which are also included in this plugin. And honestly, that's probably one of the things that makes me love it so much. And so before we dive in, I wanna let you guys know I'm using my GOC Guitars Illumina Plus. This is the six string version. And then these are my Aurora Tone Ultraviolet pickups. Uh, other than that, it's just going straight into the Audient ID14 interface. So nothing special going on gain on the interface is set to zero and nothing in between the interface and the guitar at all. So when you open up the plugin for the first time, this is what you're going to be uh, presented with. So just the stock preset, which is amp one, rhythm one. And this is what that sounds like. So as you can hear, it's already got a good bit of gain going. I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the gate a little bit. I usually crank noise gates to around 60 decibels. Uh, the noise gate, honestly, so far in this is pretty good. And keep in mind too, I have lights here and here. I have a big monitor here, I have my computer here. So I've got a lot of stuff that's causing interference and should be causing more noise to be coming out of this guitar, and it's not. So the noise gate, even at not so aggressive settings, pretty great inside of this plugin already. So when I first open up a new plugin for the first time or an amp sim or whatever it is that I'm using, um, I always go obviously to the amp first and I just leave these settings at whatever the plugin manufacturer kind of started them at. So usually that would be at noon, but this starts out at one of Josh's presets. So if we go over to the stomp boxes here, you'll notice that overdrive two is turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and click that off because I learned I really like their overdrive one. Here's what it sounds like when I just turn it on. You see the settings here. We've got the level at noon, drive is slightly low, high pass is turned up a little bit, and low pass is cranked quite a bit, but let's hear that. And then we'll go back to the other overdrive. So if we take the overdrive two and put it to normal, uh, you know, normal metal core settings, I would say. So drive down, balance up, tone pretty far up. So that sounds pretty sick, but when I go over to the overdrive one and I crank the settings a little bit similarly, so again, drive down, crank that level all the way up and listen to the way that it sounds now. I just like that flavor a little bit more. I don't know if it's brighter, maybe a little bit more mid heavy, whatever's going on behind the scenes there, I have no clue because I don't get that technical. But I'm gonna crank the high pass up a little bit more, get rid of a little bit more of the bass. And then maybe crank the low pass a little bit more. So a little bit of that hair is taken off from the top. And I'll be honest with you, that sounds pretty ridiculous as it is. And again, I haven't touched any settings over here. I watched a video recently where Josh talks about really scooping out the mids in his guitar tones. And I was like, man, I don't know if I agree with that. I love having mids in my guitar tones. I don't think I would do that. And then this preset opens up, you'll notice the mids are pretty well scooped. They're actually cranked really low in this preset and they sound sick. So it sounds pretty well mid heavy to my ears and I know mids are a very pleasing sound to me but this sounds really good scoop and I think it's because of the type of not only amps that Josh likes to use but these cabinets that he's using as well. So if we go to the cab section right now we've got the 4x12 Cali OS and this is a vintage 30 it looks like on it and a dynamic 57. And then over on the right, it's literally the same thing, but with a dynamic 421. And you see they're both pretty close to the cone. So we're getting a lot of highs and a lot of mids and not a ton of lows out of this exact cab combo. And this is leaning pretty heavily towards the dynamic 57 side. So three quarters of it are leaning over that way. Uh, but if we go back to the amp setting, I wanna go ahead and crank the mids and let you all hear how that sounds. So that's with the mids lowered. And if we go to about noon. <laughs> And if we go a little bit higher. When 
which honestly sounds pretty good. But let's go ahead and bring her all the way back down to three like he had it. <laughs> You know, I think I will crank them back up, actually. I don't know, there's just something about the mids knob inside of a 5150 style amp that does it for me. For those of you that have made it this far in the video, let me know which of those sounds better to you. Do you like the mids cranked a little bit or do you like them cut a little bit? I mean, scooping it's pretty traditional for metal settings. It all started back with what? Metallica on their uh, Mesa Boogie amps, they would always scoop out the mids, you know, the whole V shape on that amp. So I guess it is worth pointing out as well that we are in the lead channel here and the gain's not too far up. And honestly, for these pickups, it might be a little bit too high. So I know that Josh usually uses active pickups and he cranks it down a little bit lower because of that, but these pickups are kind of hot too. So I'm gonna pull it down to around three, which which is what I would usually do on a 5150 style amp. So it's still pretty well saturated. Let me pull it down a little bit more. Let's go down to two. There's a ton of gain in this amp. It sounds so good. So I think with it down around two actually sounds really great for these specific pickups. I mean, obviously your mileage may vary, so adjust your gain accordingly depending on the pickups that you're using, how you play, and even down to the overdrive settings that you're using. So obviously I've cranked the level here, I've dropped the drive to zero, and then we have the high and low pass set at relatively moderate settings here. Now, so far, this is a tone that I would use to jam through constantly. Like, this is very pleasing. I'm playing through speakers right now. I did listen to something similar through headphones earlier. This is a very inspiring guitar tone for me to play through and for me to record and write to. So this is the kind of tone that I would just start up and immediately start jamming to. If I were to use this in a mix, however, I might change things a little bit. So if we go over to the effects setting here, you'll notice that there's a lot of knobs over here on this equalizer pedal, and they seem to be pretty moderately placed right now. We have a high pass frequency and a low pass frequency. These are settings that I would go a little bit more aggressive with if I was making this for a mix. So I would bring the high pass frequency. It's at 91 hertz right now. I might raise that even to 100 hertz. It depends on the pickups that I'm using and the type of guitar that I'm playing. So on a six string, this is pretty much perfect the way that it's set. But if I were playing a seven or an eight string, I might get a little bit more aggressive because there's a little bit more woof and low end in a seven or eight string, especially in an eight string. Really doesn't matter what pickups that you're using either. You'll really end up needing to cut a lot of it out. But the way that he has it set up with this preset sounded really great and pleasing to my ears already. Um, I didn't mess with the delay or reverb. They're off for a reason. I don't really play a whole lot of leads unless it is just something for like an octave lead in a riff that I'm playing. So one more quick note that I'd like to point out here is there's been a lot of talk recently around input gain going into your audio interface when you're recording with plugins. And not every audio interface is made the same. I'm using an Audient ID14 Mark II and thankfully with this one, I don't need to add any extra gain to it. It has a great high Z input right on the front of it. It's a FET input if I'm not mistaken. Somebody please correct me on that if I'm wrong. But what I've learned through doing a little bit of research is that I don't need to add any extra input. In fact, doing so will make the guitar signal actually hit the plugins differently than it's supposed to. Now, STL is also taking care of that for you if you do have an audio interface, like an older Focusrite Scarlett, for instance, or even the older audience interfaces. If you click this little button right here, this will actually bring up a input level listener, which allows you to then start playing and allows you to get that input level right the way that it would hit a normal, like a real tube amp, a real like uh, digital or analog amp for that matter. During this process, you would select your pickup type, active or passive, so on and so forth. Set your guitar potentiometer volume to max, so the volume you'd wanna crank it, obviously. You don't want it turned down or anything like that and then adjust your sound card input level to around negative 60 dB. By sound card, they do mean your audio interface. Uh, it's called a sound card in a lot of other devices, but if it's a standalone device, it is just an audio interface. So you would adjust your input gain to where it's peaking at around negative 60 dB. You don't want it going over that because you could end up clipping the signal somewhere inside of the chain. And then you wanna play a few chords. And by play a few chords, play as hard as you would normally play. So if you get to a point where you're really digging into the strings, 
and you're playing really hard and that's how you normally play, don't test this by playing softly because then it's not going to get the real dynamics of your playing. That will be really important for how your guitar signal hits the interface and then hits the plugin itself as well. And this will affect how your guitar signal then affects the amps built into this plugin. And honestly, this goes for just about any plugin that you use as well. They're all going to rely on how your signal is getting from the guitar to the interface and then into the plugin itself. So if you don't set this part up correctly in the first place, you're probably gonna end up with some subpar tones that you might not be happy with. And honestly, for all I know, you might get some great tones out of it, but it's best to get it hitting the plugin the same way that it would hit a real amp because these plugins are modeled after a real amp. So I hope you can see this plugin is actually pretty insane and really easy to set up. This isn't something that you need to spend a ton of time dialing in. You can literally take amp one, rhythm one, and adjust the overdrive pedals to your taste. Use either of those two overdrive pedals and they both sound insane. You can literally leave most of the settings, literally stock how Josh has it set up. I did crank the mids a little bit. I did end up liking that a little bit more than having the mids scooped. But honestly, I left everything else the same on here. I cranked the gain down, I cranked the mids up, the highs and the lows are set about where he had them. Um, and I did leave the post gain alone because that's allowing the power amp to saturate the way that he had set it up. And then the cabinets just sound pretty insane to be honest with you. I love having these as IRs built into the plugin. I didn't end up using any third-party impulse responses at all, and that's actually something pretty rare for me. I always use third-party impulse responses just because I love the way the ones that I have sound. These ones sounded fantastic out of the box. And again, FX-wise, just the equalizer pedal going here with decently aggressive high and low pass filters going to make sure they cut out a lot of that just ugly hairy sounding noise at the top end of the frequency spectrum and then cutting out the low end as well just so that way it's not too oomphy and everything. You can still add a, an EQ at the end of this plug-in chain or a multi-band compressor obviously for the mix so that way you can tame those like 150 to 250 hertz like wolves when you're palm muting which don't sound too bad on this. They do have some oomph to them but you never know you might end up liking that in the recording anyways so that way the guitar actually has some body to it and it doesn't sound so thin and fake like a lot of other guitars do this sounds like a really great tube amp because it was modeled after one so but that's it for me today i hope you all like this if you want to see more videos like this please let me know down in the comments because i would love to keep making tone like creation videos like this if it helps at all for you to see this process of getting an inspiring and motivating guitar tone to play through let me know i would love to keep making these so but that's it for now peace y'all